Hey guys, I'm Rich Holder and welcome to the channel. Where are my DZ302 fans? You know, the little Chevy that could. Where are my 327 fans? You know, 365 horse, 327. I'm going to show you how to gain 86 horsepower with a 327. I'm also going to show you how to gain 190 horsepower on the 302. What are we waiting for? Let's jump right in. So let's start off with our power upgrades for the small block Chevy. This one was run on a 327 inch motor. In fact, it started out as a very famous one. It started out as the L76, which most people will remember as the 365 horse 327. And I'm going to show you how to get nearly 90 to somewhere in the 90 to 100 horsepower range from cylinder heads and cam and uh, intake manifold upgrade on this 327. The nice thing is this, this 327 was already blessed with 11 to 1 compression because it had a dome piston in it because this was a reproduction of that 365 horse motor. It didn't quite make that as we'll see, but it was equipped with the factory fuely heads with the Duntoff camshaft in it with the aluminum high rise factory intake manifold. We ran a 750 Holley uh, and long tube inch and three quarter headers on it. We were also ran a MSD distributor on it and we dialed in the air fuel and timing on it to try to optimize power production. A lot of the production stuff may or may not have been like that, but in this particular instance, we weren't, weren't able to get 365 horsepower, but run in that configuration, this reproduction of our 365 horse 327, Produced 355 horsepower at 5,700 RPM. And you could see it didn't fall off dramatically after that. In fact, we revved it all the way out to 7,000, which was probably pretty common back in the day for these, as long as you had the, the points distributor set up right and all the tuning was done on it. But the interesting thing also is that this thing made more torque than horsepower. It made 366 foot-pounds of torque at 4100 RPM and made over 350 foot pounds as you can see for a lot of the RPM range. The 327 was very popular. Guys liked it because it revved uh, a little bit more than the later 350 like the LT1 and I have a video up comparing all of these along with the 302. But the 350 had a slightly smaller camshaft in it. It had more displacement. Now, with enough camshaft and cylinder head, it would also rev. It, it doesn't need to have the short stroke in it. It's just that it was limited by head flow and on the LT1 in the case of the 350, also by cam timing, because as I said, it was slightly milder than the camshaft used in this 327 and the 302. But let's take a look and see what happened when we improved the cam timing and the head flow and also the intake manifold. So here's what happened when we put a camshaft in this thing. So we put a solid flat tappet camshaft in it. This is a comp version. And we had, uh, this was a, a comp uh, extreme energy, extreme solid. It was a 274. It had a 236, 242 degree duration split. Combined with a 501, 510 lift split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. And this compares to somewhere near 254 degrees of duration with the Duntoff cam and 485 lift and a wider 114 degree lobe separation angle. You see that camshaft had a lot of duration and it didn't have a lot of lift. And this one has a bit more lift. Um, but a modern profile and it obviously makes quite a bit more power. So equipped with the camshaft that pushed power up to 370 horsepower and peak torque was up to 380 foot-pounds. See, we're still making more torque than horsepower. It kind of gives us an idea that there's more to be had and that something obviously is holding this back. But here's what happened when we step things up even further on this combination. So we ran a set of Airflow Research L98 heads. They were 65 cc's, and these were the the um, race versions of the heads. We, <laughs> I think we originally wanted the street versions, but they said no. You're trying to make power. We're gonna we're gonna send you these. So these things flowed th over 300 cfm and to over 230 cfm on the exhaust. They had a 205-16 valve package and uh, a 65 cc combustion chamber. So we run with these heads. We also combined a different uh, camshaft on this combination. Oh no, I take that back. We ran that we continued with this flat tappet camshaft, but we put the heads on. We also put a dual plane 
this was from uh, the guys at Speedmaster. So it was their dual plane, high rise, kind of RPM air gap style intake manifold. We ran the same 750 Holly, and you could see that the power jumped up dramatically. It made 441 horsepower, and now we were making more horsepower than torque because this thing produced 408 foot-pounds of torque. And our final step was to replace the dual-plane intake manifold with a single-plane manifold. And you could see, in typical single-plane, dual-plane fashion, the single-plane made more power out at the top. In fact, made 462 horsepower, 461.6 and peak torque checked in, actually just a little bit better than the dual plane in terms of peak, 412 foot-pounds, but from 5,000 and below the single plane in typical single plane, dual plane fashion, made less torque than the dual plane did. So again, you always have to decide what you want, but from the looks of this, if you want, if you've got this kind of high RPM motor, you've got good heads on it, you've got a camshaft that allows this thing to rev now, from 5,000 to 7,000 RPM with a single plane, this thing's really gonna work well. So now let's take a look at something where we made even more power with heads, cam, and intake. The test on the 327 illustrated how easy it is to pick up big power gains with heads, cam, and intake manifold. We picked up 86 horsepower on the 327, running a better set of heads like those Airflow Research heads, you know, a more modern camshaft than that Duntop camshaft, and then a decent intake manifold. We showed both the single plane and the dual plane. Now let's set things up even further. On this combination, we actually improved the power output 190 horsepower and obviously to do that to get those kinds of gains from a small block that's already doing fairly well if you started off with a 200 horsepower one those kind of gains are fairly easy to get but we were starting off with an original reproduction of a DZ302, meaning it had 11 to 1 compression, it had the fuel heads on it, it had the Duntoff cam in it, same one as we ran in the 327, so 254 degrees of duration. It had a dual plane high rise intake manifold, and in this case had a 750 Holly and the inch and three quarter headers. So run in this manner with an optimized tune, our reproduction of the DZ302 made 357 horsepower and 333 foot-pounds of torque, and note that we made more horsepower than torque, where on the 327 it was the opposite, and also on the smaller 302 we made peak power a little bit at a little bit higher RPM. We made peak power at 6700 RPM, indicating that <laughs> all the stories of people, yeah, these things love to rev. But here's what we did to improve the power on this little DZ302. You can see we pushed power up quite a bit. In this case, we started out with our first up set of upgrades, 518 horsepower and a really flat torque curve that basically made within one or two foot pounds for more than a thousand RPM. But this thing ended up producing right at 400 foot pounds, 399. 0.9, so that's pretty close to 400. That's as close as you can get. But here's what we did to get that power. First of all, we changed the factory oil pan to a Moroso pan and windage tray that had a kick out and a dedicated windage tray to remove windage and you know have better oiling. We also replaced the fuely heads with a good set of airflow research heads. In this case, they were 210 cc airflow research heads. They were the fully ported. They flowed 322 CFM. 237 on the exhaust. They had a 20816 valve package, uh, 210 cc's, as I said, eight millimeter valve, 65 or 64 cc combustion chambers. And really these were more head than we need. And we're, we're making 500 and less than 520 horsepower. We have heads that will support more than 100 horsepower over that. But when we told them what we were doing, they said, yeah, we're gonna send you enough head. And this is what they sent. So the heads worked very well. We combined that with a solid roller camshaft in place of the solid flat tappet camshaft. And our solid roller camshaft was a 640-621 lift split, 256-260 degree duration split, and a tight 107 degree lobe separation angle. We retained, as I said, our inch and three quarter headers with the airflow research heads were topped with a Holly strip dominator single plane intake manifold, and we even stepped up in carburetor size to a 950 Holly. So we had more carburation, better intake manifold, more cylinder head, and more camshaft, and all of that stuff. We even tried, as indicated here, um, different a couple of different tapered combos. Um, we had changed the oil. We even tightened up the lash a little bit to help us improve the power out at the top, and all of that worked very well. But the thing that worked even better than <laughs> than those minor changes, like the spacer and, and the timing and all that stuff, was we put a tunnel ram on it. And the tunnel ram kind of never fails to make good power. And here's what happened when we put the tunnel ram on it. 
This was an Edelbrock Tunnel Ram with two 750 Hollies. And you can see we push power up. And not only we push peak power up, which now is making 545 horsepower, peak torque was also up to 416 foot pounds. But you can see in the RPM range that we tested it, which was 45 to 7,500. Again, this is more of a race oriented kind of version, especially with the small displacement. But it improved power everywhere. It improved power from 4,500 all the way past 7,500 RPM, more power and more torque, indicating obviously that the tunnel ram um, makes more power than the single plane intake manifold, which is kind of typical. We've, we've run this kind of test a lot. And obviously we dialed in the air fuel and dialed in the timing on the tunnel ram. It actually wanted the same air fuel and the same timing. It just took a little bit of jetting because now we have two carburetors. So we got to change the jetting on both the primary and the secondary side of, of two different carburetors. So it took a few jet changes before we got that. This thing ran about 41 degrees of timing. Let me, I'm going to verify that. Yeah, 40, oh, we're showing as much as 45. So we just swung the timing until we made peak power, and this is what it did. So if you want to make lots of power from your small block Chevy, add the right heads, cam, intake, and also we tossed in the oiling system because we knew we were going to be running lots of RPM. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure? Doing modifications to our DZ302 and our L76 327. Go ahead right now. This is the time to comment because I know what you're going to say. Yeah, Richard, how many DZ302s are actually left? How many L76 327s are actually left? And the guys that have those, since they're restoring them, are they apt to even modify those? But that's not really the point. I'm not telling you that you need to have your original DZ302 and modify it like I did to make more power or the 365 horse 327 and modify it like I did to make more power. That's not really the point. The point is a 302, you know, because it likes to rev, it has that short stroke, that's still a common combination. And also the 327, also a common combination. So if you're starting with one of those combinations or really any small block, and you have 11 to 1 compression on your short block because you've got a dome piston, it's so easy to make power. But you don't have to have the 11 to 1 piston in there. You can start with any small block, anything from the wrecking yard, any of the even smaller than 302 combinations, even the bigger than 327 combinations, because all these small blocks respond the same way. The key to making power is to add the right heads, cam, and intake. And obviously we did this on both these combinations. We picked up 86 horsepower with a 327 and 190 horsepower when we went full tilt on the 302. But here's a question for you and I want you to comment. What kind of test would you like to see? Do you want to see more junkyard oriented stuff like maybe hand porting stock heads or replacing a stock 882 head with a Vortec head? Maybe that kind of junkyard upgrade, maybe a smaller camshaft with gas prices the way they are. Do you want to see even milder camshafts that might well get better mileage? Let me know in the comments. I'm Richard Older. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Make sure to comment. More videos coming up.